Hello, this is Jack from Visual Effects Sorts. Um, today I'm going to show you how to make a simple little cave scene just using three or four planes and good textures. Um, so today we'll use rock textures from our asset library, but again, you can get these from anywhere you want. So we jump in to have a look and we want something that's quite bulky. So I'm going to go for Isle of Man Rock 5. We are working on getting these done, but the volumes are kind of our priority at the moment, so we'll have some more soon. So I'm just going to use Isle of Man 5. We want to make something that looks pretty cool, but really easy. So we're going to get a little figure for scale. And then we're going to create three planes. This one is going to be the base, so let's make it about 4,000 by 4,000. And then we're just going to hit the plane button. So what we want to do is you just want to create almost like a little cave. This is where the better the textures you get, the more realistic and better variation of an image you'll get. So, and we're just going to create a weird, almost a triangle shape doesn't necessarily have to be touching but again that can depend on what you're trying to achieve and we will then just come out and grab everything except for our base and pull it along the side so we've got more plane to play with and then we will set up a temporary camera inside our cave So we'll go for about 24 mil or 22. Yeah, come in a bit. So what we want to do is we want to create a universal material. Open it up. Open the node editor. Just drop these into the node editor. So here we are. We've got them all here. So that little albedo map, so we'll whack that in there. Remember this is a quick, dirty way to get good images. That's our ambient occlusion, so we need to do the multiply. Don't need that. Don't need that. And you will just drop the roughness in. And then the displacement. So we just go to displacement, add displacement, then we get a little tab. Throw that in there. Make it 4K. We'll add this to something quite extreme for now and then maybe bring it down. So we'll go 31 maybe. So once we've got that, we just need to, you can see it's quite specular here, so we'll just knock that down. So we'll go to metallic, knock that off. And we can probably bring a bit back maybe if we really want to, not specular down. It's got something that's more rocky. And then we'll just drop it on to the three planes. So working with one at a time, we will make sure this looks good. So we'll just go like five, five. I'll probably bring this down a little. And we can bring the specularity down. Same with this, we'll go three, 
and maybe two. And then for the variation on the other side, we'll go four and two. Maybe a bit less. But we want to pull this in a bit and we kind of want to create more of that triangle shape. Create a light. it down and get something quite creative so so we can add a bit of depth of field too nothing too major not that much we could even go a bit wider a bit close to the ground we can duplicate this plane if we wanted to add a bit of water And then you got something that looks pretty cool. If you wanted to create more jagged edges, you'd need a better displacement texture. So we've got a few others. So we could use different displacement from Iron Man Rock 1. And then we could really pump that up to get more variation. So once we've got to this point, we can just start tweaking the texture a bit. to get a look that we're happy with. So we just want to adjust the polygons and what we'll do is we'll literally just start pulling some out and creating a cool looking funky shape. So we'll create a new universal material We will duplicate the bottom plane. We've got our new material. Let's create some pebbles. So we're dragging our textures. Delete the useless maps for us that we don't need. So that's roughness, normal. Albedo and ambient, we don't need that, we don't need this. Again we'll jump and create the displacement. Drop that in, it's probably only going to be about 2 centimeters based on real world scale. We'll have a look. And then we'll just drop that on that plane. 1.5 by 1.5 then, now we've changed it to cubic. And then we'll just jump in and change that displacement because it's a bit severe. Um, then what we'll do as well is we will add object tags. So we want tags and we want object. We want subdivision and we want to make this one and we want them quite sharp so we'll go up to five and then we will copy this onto all the other subdivisions and this is a little trick to just make it look a bit more crispy and more real so we'll jump back to our other camera turn on our other layers what we want to do is we want to create it so it looks like those pebbles are coming in the corners so we will just get our plane Turn on the shading with lines and just reduce the amount of polys down. So we've got this, slip this in the middle and then we'll pull up just a little bit. Uh, 
and then we will jump onto our bot bottom one do the same and we will squish this in just a little bit actually we'll squish it out and then flatten it down so we get some of them pebbles coming through to break up this texture like that So that's already looking a lot better looks like there's variation it looks like we've got a floor that is quite more realistic get a bit more less depth of fields make it more believable to feather off the um, textures a bit better and make them look a bit nice we can create a Gaussian feather filter radius and it just gives it a more polished looking look because of that though it has adjusted the displacement at the bottom so we need to just push that down a bit a bit more and then adding vegetation and different types of like rocks and stuff like that could help make this look even better but so if we've got something like this also if you didn't want any light coming in at the back because this is octane We could just copy one of these planes, plunk it here to block some of the light. So when we go to PT now, we get that. Um, and then you could actually change how much comes in from the other side if you wanted to, just by lifting it up a little bit. So if we just come back and make it look like there might be another entrance from the back. So it's letting a little bit in for the foreground, creating that more believable look. And then the lazy water is literally a specular material. Blunk. And it creates a really super smooth look. But if you add a bit of noise to that, then it'll look like proper water. But then again, if you wanted to just have a little few puddles we can just pull that down creating landscape in the background so it's not repetitive would be also good but this is just a foreground quick easy a few planes and you've got a piece of work which is nice so hopefully you found this tutorial useful and i'll catch you on the next one